The Quan Alexander New York Jets reunion dreams may be over. Let's get right into it with the latest. Zoinks. It is unequivocally the Super Bowl for New York Jet fans. Field Gates, baby. Field Gas Guardians. Let's bring him on the show. Come on, people. Connor Rogers is joining the show. What's up, Connor? But Trevor Gas Guard Sycamore, baby. For me, personally, my favorite New York Jet of all time. Wow, it's great to be on. What an intro that was right there. Paul, you, nobody does an intro like you, man. Paul, you, you give the best intro of literally any podcast that I'm, I've, I've ever seen. I'm going to lose my gas darn bananas. Hey, what's poppin' everybody? Paul Esden Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Make sure you guys like the video as soon as you get in and hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. All this is Debbie Downer news to share, and the Quan Alexander Jets thing might be over. How do we know this? Well, ESPN insiders covered the Jets for over 30 years. Ritz Samini joined Jake Asman, our fellow Jets content creator, on the Jake Asman show, and he dealt a very harsh reality to Quan Alexander and what it would take for him to return to the Jets in 2023. So let's roll the footage again. This uh, video is courtesy of the Jake Asman show. You guys can watch the uh, full interview with Ritz Samini over on his channel, but let's roll the footage. Well, the last I checked in with his people, uh, they, they were hopeful. You know, I think he visited one. I think he visited Pittsburgh recently. Yep. I mean, Quan, you, you recall last year, he signed very late as well. Uh, you know, he's looking for money. You know, the guy played a lot last year. He's a former pro bowler. Granted, it was a long time ago, uh, but he is a former pro bowler. He's looking for more money than he's than he's being offered right now, and the money's just not there. I, I don't think the Jets are going to bend over backwards to get him back in because Jamie and Sherwood right now is penciled in at that spot. You know, it's a position in their defense. It's like the third linebacker spot. And we know that that guy doesn't play a lot. The Jets are in nickel about 60% of the time when they're in nickel. A lot of times that linebacker comes off the field. So it's not an every down player. They don't want to spend probably more than a million or two on that position. And I'm guessing that Quan Alexander wants more than that. So if he doesn't drop his price, you know, probably to something like the veteran minimum, I think the Jets will just go with Jamie and Sherwood. Yikes. There from Ritz Simini of ESPN uh, on the Jake Asman show. A harsh reality indeed for Quan. And we love Quan. The Quanster. I don't even know. K9. Like, we love Quan. An emotional leader and all these other things. But it sounds like the clamoring from fans may ultimately fall short. Because here's the fact of the matter. Ritz Simini says for this to potentially happen, Quan Alexander have to drop his asking price to the veteran minimum. I mean, the bottom of the barrel. And as I look here, guys, we have a full article down below with some interesting details, including the NFL veteran minimum and how it works. Now, the NFL veteran minimum is $750,000. However, it is affected by NFL experience. Long story short, the more you play in the NFL, the higher that number is. It goes from $750,000 as a rookie to $870,000 if you have one year of experience, $940,000 if you have two years of experience, $1.08 $1.08 million with three years of experience, and that extends all the way up to at least seven seasons of service time, which is $1.165 million. That is the money. Now, the Jets gave Quan Alexander slightly more than the veteran minimum when they signed him late July, uh, early August of last year. He got $1.27 million with $152,000 and change in uh, guarantees. So the Jets gave him a little bit more than that to come in, but not much. I mean, it was very close to the veteran minimum. And ultimately, if we boil it down to this, the Jets are saying how they feel about Quan by offering potentially that veteran minimum. They don't value him very highly. Now, maybe it still happens. Maybe Quan has a slice of humble pie when we get closer and he says, hey, I just want to be on the Jets, so even if it's for less, I will. The only things I'll contend with Ritz Samini there, and the analytics speak for themselves, the Jets do run a 4-3 scheme, but 60% of the time it works every time. 
I make that joke with some of that going on. But no, really, 60% of the time they're playing this nickel, which means the third linebacker isn't on the field. So Rich Mini says, i.e., that guy doesn't get a lot of playing time. And that's true. Quan Alexander last year played all 17 games, made 12 starts. But when you look at some of the snap percentages, he wasn't out there all the time. The reason why I would personally bring Quan in if it was up to me and I would shell out the bucks again, pay him a little bit more than the veteran minimum. I'd be willing to go. What, what are we talking about? At the end of the day, we're arguing over 1 million or 2 million bucks. The Jets have plenty of money. They're in the top five, top 10, top seven, whatever it is in NFL cap space. It's a kind of a fluid thing with all the movement and the Aaron Rodgers restructure and other things that are happening. What are we talking about here? It's not just to be the third linebacker. I think that's important in my own way, but it's to ensure the position because if CJ Mosley or Quincy Williams gets hurt, you are effed. The Jets have made it clear that if Quan's not going to come to come back for their price, it's Jamie and Sherwood time. And maybe Jamie and Sherwood is going to be dandy. Maybe he'll be fine. I don't know. Or, or one of these other guys, Chaz Surratt, Thompson, Nassler, Dean, Zaire, Barnes, whoever your guy is, no matter what, the one commonality between all those names is inexperience, wildly inexperienced. So you're, you're banking on, of course, the top two guys on the depth chart staying healthy and Robert Sala being a linebacker whisperer of sorts. I would pay the money to sleep a little easier at night, knowing if, if, if CJ Moser or Quincy got hurt, I'd be okay because Quan could step up. I'm not saying Quan is a perfect player. I'm not saying he's an all-pro linebacker like C.J. Mosley was last year. I'm not saying any of that. But I'd feel a lot better with Quan Alexander, the proven veteran, than some wild, unknown youngster in Jamer and Sherwood who's entering year number three. Again, the things that I don't know, that the Jets know, is how Jamian's looking in OTAs. And uh, the media is not available for all the OTAs. They're only available for select OTAs. So we don't know the full progression of Jamie and Sherwood or any of these linebackers for that matter throughout this process. But it sure sounds like that dream is coming to a brutal end because Quan wants more money. And I don't blame Quan. He's coming off a career high year, but here it is. Not only are the Jets not giving him money, none of the other 31 NFL teams are giving money. And here's my hypothesis. Why? Quan was healthy last year, and when I say healthy, played the full season. He was he appeared in all 17 games. That's the first time that happened for Quan since 2016. It's 2023, so it's been a long time. So while that is certainly a notch and a feather in his cap that he was able to appear the entire season, obviously the NFL is like, mm, fluke, outlier. And quite frankly, it is. When you look at the breadth of his career, he's only been able to stay healthy once in the last seven years. If that's the case, they're saying that 2023 doesn't look like a sign of things to come for the young man. It looks like a outlier on the grand scheme of the track record. So what NFL teams and maybe the Jets are asking is, okay, Quan, if you come back and have another fully healthy season, okay, maybe you could get paid one more time as you're turning 30. But they're not going to pay the pri uh, uh, the uh, piper here in early June. And quite frankly, no NFL team is, regardless of your injury situation. I don't imagine Quan's going to get that four, five, six, seven million dollar deal, whatever he's looking for. I don't think he's going to get it which means it looks like potentially this Quan Jets marriage could be over. And it's kind of sad because I like Quan a lot, emotional leader. I think he would provide nice insurance at linebacker just in case injuries happen. And of course they can. It's like getting volcano insurance. Now, what are the chances I'm going to need volcano insurance for my house in New York? Probably not high, but I guess there's a chance it could happen. That's why you get volcano insurance. Now, Quan insurance Okay, what are the chances CJ Moser or Quincy go down? I don't know. They've both been pretty healthy. So I, you know, I guess maybe not high, but you don't, you have to hope for the best and expect the worst. And if you have that mentality, you should be prepared for most scenarios. And again, we're not talking about game changing money here. Give him double what he made last year. Let's call it uh, 2.4 million. What are we talking about? To feel a little bit better about the linebacking core. So uh, shout out to uh, Jake Asman uh, for that juicy nugget. And it looks like Quan may not be coming back to the Jets. So Jet fans, prepare yourselves. Get yourselves ready for Jamin Sherwood, J Chaz Surratt, Thompson Osserdy, and Zaire Barnes. These are the names that could be floating. Maybe even Chuck Clark a little bit more in the box. Those are the names to start getting comfortable with because that is going to be the answer at this point until something changes. Make sure you guys like the video, hit subscribe down below. Also feel free to check out the full article with some other interesting details on the potential Quan Alexander Jets marriage or divorce, as we may be seeing this off season. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time right here.